Okay, perfect. Um, well, hello, everybody. Uh, again, thank you so much to Paul and to David for inviting me. I'm not an um, archaeologist. I'm an archaeologist wannabe all my <laughs> life, so this is my wonderful opportunity to be here. Um, this paper uh, relates to my broader research on um, the presence and the value of tombstones in Bosnia and Herzegovina for understanding the um, period of um, Ottoman history, but also of uh, contemporary in contemporary period. In in the sense that um, I, it's very. If anybody has been to Bosnia, has anybody been to Bosnia here? I think you should go. Here is a moment to um, uh, emphasize that it's actually a very nice place to go. But if you travel through Bosnia, you cannot not. Uh, encounter uh, some cemetery. There are cemeteries all over the place. Lots of people apparently have died there. But in addition to that, it's actually quite a um, diverse and very vivid kind of dynamic landscape uh, of, of the dead. And um, for me, this was actually an important... Um, I come out from a religious studies perspective and, and a history perspective, so for me it was an interesting um, um, observation to see how that can be integrated in our understanding of the past. Um, when I, uh, before I go into um, a, a kind of vis visual journey with you, which I would like to show as, as to what it is that I actually have done with these tombstones, I want to bring up a couple of um, theoretical and methodological questions that we have already addressed, and I think many of the papers have, have talked about that, but this is perhaps you know, yet another layer that I'd like to add. One is um, the question of how do we speak of a local culture um, without um, underplaying its broader significance. So this question of local versus um, translocal or m micro versus macro, um, um, regional versus global, and so on and so forth, which um, I think is, is very important nowadays because we are, you know, on the one hand we deal with the question of geographical t determinism. You know, is this something because it's a product of this particular um, uh, place? And on the other hand, we are asked to, to, to think of cultures as being open and porous. So at what point do we actually draw the line? Um, I am uh, here in that regard drawing on the work of two, um, two scholars who I find actually very um, insightful in, in that regard. One is Sidney Pollock, whose work on um, South Asia has um, uh, be, has uh, focused primarily on literature, but has, it's really broader in terms of the literary culture, uh, where he talks about the encounter between cosmopolitan and vernacular systems. And what is actually quite um, uh, insightful as far as I'm concerned in his work is that uh, he talks about the way in which they're mutually um, influenced and mutually historicized. So in other words, that that it, it, there is really no such a sense that only the cosmopolitan culture affects the local culture, but in fact that the local culture also affects the, the cosmopolitan. And that this is a process that needs to be recognized at any level of the discussion between, um, particularly in pre-modern period, uh, so that the, the production of difference is done as a part of this interface between the cosmopolitan and the local. And what Sidney Pollock has, has um, demonstrated is how much, how often, in fact, the vernacular culture in ways becomes, takes over the cosmopolitan impulse and, in fact, becomes almost the standard, the cosmopolitan standard instead of uh, just the local vernacular. Um, and the second um, person that I like to evoke is Avner Bezaken, is really a scholar, who has done quite a bit of work on Ottoman sciences and um, in his book, Cross-Cultural Exchanges, he argues that cultures are not just porous, but they actually consist of many origins. That's that every culture is really plural. So that really, we, even when we talk about local culture, we cannot um, undermine, we, can, we, we must talk about the plurality. Um, and that um, the question is then, how do we, do we look into mechanisms that combine one culture from many? In other words, how it is that we, where are, what are the margins of culture which allow themselves to be to open up and to absorb um, other uh, models. Um, and he calls something, um, he, he, in the process which he calls a zone of mu um, mutual embrace, uh, where he, think, he, he argues that exchange takes place, place much more freely and randomly than we normally assume, and with, uh, often without relation to power. 
And he argues that it's actually in those areas that are the loci of any culture and scientific innovation, um, that, that are most, the most important loci of culture and scientific innovation, and that these kinds of uh, innovations, in fact, feed back into the uh, global culture. And what I find particularly persuasive in his argument is his observation, and he, of course, works on the pre-modern period, um, his observation that mo in most instances, um, these kinds of spaces have been um, negatively um, affected by the rise of nationalism. And we just had actually a very um, useful presentation to that effect about, uh, Thessalo about Thessaloniki, but um, as well as, uh, of course, in the case of, of Dalmatia. But the, the, the task is then uh, not just to brush history against this, this grain of nationalism and uh, going back to what Chloe mentioned about politicization, the political uh, aspect of this process, but to write history of lost cultures and ways of life in which, in some ways, does not fit into these national historiographies, which is especially the case in the Balkans, where we have actually the whole narrative of the Balkans has, has followed this rather by now um, exhausted uh, dichotomy <coughs> bifurcation between uh, Muslims and Christians in the Balkans. And that's the only really narrative that, that feeds into uh, the way in which the, the population has been um, um, located in, in the national imaginary, but also in terms of the historical presence and absence uh, um, in, in, uh, in the uh, uh, heritage. So in that sense, uh, we are talking about um, the, 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 the question of the discursive representations of uh, geopolitical space. Um, and the third question that um, um, that has framed my, my work is, how do we look at tombstone, not just as a, initially when I started actually looking at tombstones, I was really looking for the epi epigraphic evidence primarily to see what it can tell us. But in fact, rather than just treating it as a telephone book, how do we in fact bring it out and treat it as a culture, as a dynamic cultural text, uh, which it relates to other texts that, that might exist, that might, might, might um, exist in the, in the, um, in the presence. And how do we treat the dead as subjects rather than objects? So how do we animate them through uh, our understanding of what uh, the tombstones have to say and how they can be placed in not just in history, but also in the way in which we inherit them? Um, so my, my, my <coughs> direct research questions uh, primarily related to the question, to, to the issue of Islamization of, um, of Bosnia. Um, and um, here I... Um, was uh, especially um, concerned or, or intrigued by uh, the way in which we know that you know that that um, uh, among the very few places that had intense process of conversion to Islam, uh, Bosnia and Albania really stand out. Uh, but there is really no understanding as to why that had happened, and there are quite a few theories. Uh, we know that this was not the process of. of um, propaganda feed that the Ottomans were not particularly interested in saving the souls of the Christians of the Balkans in which you know some other colonial empires were but and, and, and projects were but that they they first and foremost and they, they themselves actually the Ottoman sources uh, um, indicate that that the Ottoman administrators are very surprised by the numbers of conversions that we encounter in places like Bosnia and while we have Ottoman bureaucratic machinery was so very detailed with its uh, defters, with its uh, documents that tell us about the conversion, it, they don't, these, these documents don't really tell us what that meant in qualitative terms. They tell us how many people, but what exactly that meant in terms of the reality of life uh, is impossible to recover. And uh, very few conversion uh, narratives exist, and they're usually polemical. So for me, the tombstone was, in a way, an, an, an additional source which could tell us of how, at least in this case, death was Islamized. How did new Muslims uh, uh, treat death, um, and how did they, how were they remembered as dead in the um, among uh, their neighbors who were not Muslim, and as well as among their family who who was uh, Muslim. So. Um, so that was the, the so these other questions and uh, also of course relate to the questions of gender cultural reality and literacy uh, how that is balanced against the, the that culture how the changes in in literacy in Bosnia and the adoption of new languages Ottoman languages also affect the culture of death and in more general terms how do how do the death do the dead and how does death occupy the space uh, historical space as well as, as uh, current space. 
um, a map of the Ottoman Empire that we already actually see. This is from the 1600s, which uh, sees its extent. Um, you can see its extent. Um, and Bosnia is right there as part of Rumelia. Uh, these are the defters, which um, are the, the standard documents on the conversion. Uh, they are terribly boring, and they are so, which is why I did not really want to uh, go too much into them. But you know, they are really quite so. There are so many. They are so uh, helpful, of course. But, but uh, again, it's very statistical. Um, in med uh, medieval uh, Bosnian landscape of death consists of um, incredibly interesting tombstones, which are referred to as stečak, necropolis stečak. Is a, there are huge monoliths that exist all around uh, Bosnia, which are now under UNESCO protection as part of the tripartite heritage of Bosnia, Croatia, uh, Serbia, as well as Mas uh, uh, Montenegro. But they are, uh, for the most part, located in Bosnia. Um, they are enormous uh, mono monoliths that have not really that have been understood in many different ways, uh, particularly in association with the so-called dualist history of, of Bosnia, the Bogomil past. But that that thesis has been rebuked. This is, however, the the um, uh, these are the the uh, residues of this medieval uh, landscape of death that you can find all around Bosnia. Um, another here. Um, the, in the, in, uh, after the fall of Bosnia in 1463, um, which is the official uh, fall under the Ottoman rule, we have a process, of course, as I said, in, t in terms of very rapid Islamization. But we also have something that I would like to differentiate from uh, the, the question of religious change of the religious landscape. It's also a change of the cultural landscape that exists in, uh, that can be observed in the culture of death. Um, the early Muslim grave stones in Ottoman Bosnia. Uh, these are some of the older ones. Um, as you, if you if you paid attention to the size of these are enormous tombstones. These are the, the, the size of these stones is quite uh, disproportional to the idea that somehow these people try to hide themselves from the Catholics and the, the Orthodox churches. I mean, this is not the way to hide yourself. Um, so, but it's, but what we have actually as a as a result is a kind of process of verticalization of, of the tombstone in style of the Ottoman uh, commemorative culture, funerary culture, but um, equally uh, scarce in terms of their uh, uh, representation, iconographic and ethnographic representation in the, in the early period, um, but somewhat also disproportioned. Many of them are extremely large. One uh, here on the, on the left side is over three meters tall. We encounter some which are almost five meters tall. Uh, again, they, they look enormous. Um, but um, there is really no sense as to why exactly they are like that, other than that this is a period in which the, 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 the horizontal becomes vertical in an equally disproportionate way. Um, we don't have really any reason to, we don't know why, other than, than you know, the, the circumstantial evidence that these are Muslim tombstones. There is nothing on them precisely that, that, that uh, indicates that they are Muslim, because there are no writings, there are no uh, necessarily uh, any kind of uh, symbolism that would tell us that this is actually uh, a Muslim tombs tombstone, other than, of course, in, you know, in this case we have a turban, but in many cases we don't even have the turban. So in this early period we have actually this, just the, the kind of transposition from horizontal to the vertical. Uh, in terms of the Catholic tombstones, likewise we have actually, uh, you see this tombstone on the left is very similar to the tombstone that you had with the, uh, uh, among the, the Muslims. Uh, but it just happens to be, of course, in the Catholic tombs, in the, uh, the graveyard. So we assume it's a, it's a Catholic tombstone. There is, there is very little that becomes um, uh, visibly um, uh, identifiable at this, in this early period. Later on, we actually, there is a rise of the so-called, this is referred to as Bosnsky Križ, a form of uh, anthropomorphic cross that we actually encounter elsewhere. There are some in Ireland, in, in, um, in, um, in southern Fr south of France, that uh, become characteristic of uh, the 16th century and 17th century Catholic tombstones in Bosnia. Orthodox tombstones, likewise, if you see, look at this one here, again, there is no clear identification of it as being Orthodox. Um, the, the ones in the, in the fore foreground indicated this is an orthodox graveyard, and they are much more visibly so. So I'm here actually more trying to, to indicate these points of nodes of similarity that, that make it uh, very interesting to see how 
people did not necessarily see themselves as having to be commemorated in, in specifically a, a Muslim Catholic or Orthodox way, but rather it was a way of saying, I belong perhaps to a different religious now identity, but I also belong to the community that, that is more complicated than that, and that this is a way of uh, being part of a more public, not the only personal way of commemoration. Um, spatial intimacy was also very important. In the early um, Ottoman period, uh, the, the, the uh, Muslim and uh, as well as the Christian tombstones rose out of uh, the same uh, the, the landscape of medieval landscape. So very f frequently we will find um, uh, the Stachak Cemetery right here in the middle. <coughs> On this side in the foreground, the um, Muslim tombstones and in the background, an active Orthodox um, uh, graveyard. So, spatial, so in other words, there was no taboo of mixing the dead. And this is actually, I think, very important. To, to acknowledge that this was not, this was, if we are looking, if we, if we follow what Michel Rogan says, that necropolis is the other side of necropolis, that this is an indication, and in fact, people didn't see a problem of mixing the dead. And what, what is actually quite interesting is that in the 19th century onwards, with the industrialization and modernization of the region, we have more and more roads broken through these cemeteries, through these spaces that were uh, jointly that it existed jointly and are now sep separated apart. As you see here, actually, there is a, now a fence that stands apart to, to separate the, the Orthodox tombstone from these historic tombstones. Here, likewise, this is a Catholic Muslim tombstone uh, a cemetery, which um, is now separated by a big fence, but otherwise it was a space of continuum. You have here um, uh, a, a Stachek uh, 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 tombstone uh, then followed by an early Catholic tombstone, and then down there the Muslim graveyard, uh, the Muslim gravestones, but now separated by a big, um, this is it from central Bosnia, by uh, a big fence. Um, it, likewise, you have a similar thing in the Jewish cemetery. Sarajevo Jewish cemetery is, is the largest cemetery, um, second largest in Europe uh, after, after Prague, um, and it is quite well preserved. And in it we find, likewise, quite a few examples of recycling, of funerary recycling. Here, a, um, a Stachek uh, cemetery becoming a Jewish tombstone with the, with the inscription in Hebrew. Uh, so, uh, you know, moved on to, to a different epoch. Um, this is one of my most favorite uh, cemeteries that there are. If one can speak of favorite cemeteries, this is my favorite cemetery. It's in, in a little uh, a central uh, town, uh, village of Zhunovi, uh, an Orthodox village. Uh, that is the size of this of this room, and that contains absolutely every example of historical tombstone that there is. Um, so we have here a Muslim tombstone, and the and the um, uh, in the back there is a Catholic one. Here there are two uh, stage cemeteries, and then the active uh, Orthodox uh, tombstones. In the, such a small spatial, uh, intimate space, in, intimate uh, uh, setting, uh, all of them are represented. Uh, likewise, as much as we see the spatial intimacy, we see also shared iconography. Um, in, uh, these are the, the tombstone, early to, uh, Muslim tombstones with, with the representation of, in this case, the, the a face of, of a girl with a braid. How Slavic of her to have a braid on top of her head. You know, this is, um, you know, it, it's still, it's, again, we, we talk about, the, you know, we don't normally associate visual representations with with Islamic tombstones, but this is quite common in, in this period in Bosnia. Uh, here as well, um, a, a man, I don't know what he's doing, dancing or something, but uh, uh, with, a, with a kind of national, in, 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 in a traditional uh, way. Uh, the other side of this tombstone has a snake on it. This one here uh, has um, uh, a dagger. Um, there is the snake, a lamp here. Um, on, on the Muslim tombs, on, on the Muslim tombstones. And again, these are uh, these are uh, uh, symbols that exist in all other tombstones. I f I'm focusing on the Islamic tombstones because of the of, of the <coughs> concern that I had. Um, and and actually, a very interesting phenomenon in which we have the combination, the, the the joint usage of the cross and the crescent. Even though, of course, the crescent at this period is not still the the official symbol of the Ottoman state, but nevertheless, is a rather recognizable symbol of of the Islamic uh, culture. And there had been, of course, crescent present in, uh, for used in different way on the stage of cemeteries, but it's now being used in certain cases together with the cross. 
So there is this is a tombstone which has on the on one side the crescent and the other one uh, the other side of the cross. We don't really know whether it's unless we, you know, have other way of determining whether this is a Muslim or a Christian tombstone. We don't really know. Uh, likewise, in this case, um, it's a Muslim tombstone, so we assume it's a Muslim um, uh, it's a Muslim uh, 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 cross. It's, it's a Muslim tombstone. Uh, it's a Muslim cemetery. That's what I wanted to say. The stage check is there, but there is a cross right on this big uh, Muslim tombstone. Uh, crescent is on the other side, and the symbol of, of um, a um, of, of a bird. Uh, in uh, Livno, in, in Herzegovina, uh, in the Catholic uh, graveyard, likewise, there are these cross and crescent combinations, uh, which are um, equally uh, presented, equally uh, present. Um, again, um, uh, and then um, the, uh, in 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 one of the um, open cemet cemeteries that has not been claimed that is is uh, referred to as the cemetery of the wedding martyrs. It's a very common. Uh, folk narrative about uh, these cemeteries. It gives us actually um, a different take on it. And uh, when I ask the villagers what they think, what, what they can tell me about this particular uh, cemetery, uh, which has cross and the crescent, uh, the story goes as follows. And this is a story that you see all around Bosnia. Uh, there, there was a wedding procession one morning of Christians, and then uh, 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 a Muslim uh, gang came by, and they all killed each other and the tombstones that were raised were to honor them both. In another part of Bosnia, they would say all Muslim procession and the Christians came and they killed each other. So these are common, it's a common topos of the, 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 the uh, uh, they are called the, the cemeteries of wedding martyrs, all Krvavi Svatovi, all around, all around Bosnia. Uh, but again, in recognition that, you know, that, that it's there, they're mixed together. I'm, I'm going to be done very soon, so I thought the Chloe was. And here, uh, here is another example of, of one of these. This one actually has an inscription that it is a Muslim tombstone. So it is, um, uh, it is, but again with the, with the, with the cross on it, and with this anthropomorphic cross, which is similar, which is similar to Bosnian Kriš, which is common to the Catholic tradition. So this is the, the, the bigger view of that wedding martyr. And then we have the question of shared epigraphy. These two tombstones are now located in, um, in the um, yard of the National Museum in, in Sarajevo. Um, and they, have, uh, they are absolutely identical. We know by the, name, uh, by the names that, uh, one, that one is a Christian and one is a Muslim, Mahmud and Radivoj, but the inscriptions are identical. Uh, and they're written in the same way, and they, in fact, commemorate the same thing. So the, the, the stone masonry <coughs> is obviously the same, and they use the uh, 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 completely similar uh, icon uh, iconography as well. Um, and uh, going back to the question of translation and, and uh, the issue of literacy, um, this is an interesting phenomenon that um, I have encountered in Bosnia and nowhere else in my study of Islamic uh, commemorative uh, epigraphic culture. Um, in on whatever sh uh, few um, uh, inscriptions we have on the Stechak tombstones, and out of 60,000, there are only uh, 4,000 4, that are inscribed, the common phrase is Ase Bilig, this is the marker. And it's written in, um, in, um, in, in Bosanchica, in, in, uh, uh, in the Bosnian Cyrillic. Um, and in this case, this is a Muslim tombstone which says Ase Bilig. Uh, Suleymana Oshkopice. So by the name we know that this is Muslim, it's a Suleyman, uh, inscribed in, um, uh, again given the, the inscription, this is one of the rare inscriptions that has been preserved that is in, in Bosanchica and Cyrillic. Uh, on the right side is a typical um, uh, inscription in Arabic that becomes common in the, as said, the late 17th century on, which states, Hada Sahib Nishan, or Sahib Had Nishan, or the resident of this marker. Nishan is a word that is used commonly. It has become the, the central idiom, Nishan, in, in uh, Bosnia for tombstone. Um, and in Ottoman idiom, it's Mezartash. In Bosnia, it's called Nishan. Nishan doesn't mean anything in, uh, other than being a target. When you shoot at something, that's a target. So, uh, however, Bilig is a word which also means the target. So what we have here is a translation, in fact, from medieval idiom into the Arabic from <coughs> the uh, local 
agriculture. So we have, in fact, enrichment of the Ottoman um, cosmo uh, the, the sort of that, that imperial funerary <coughs> idiom with um, the, the local Bosnian idiom that comes from medieval period. Um, uh, in um, likewise here, uh, two tombstones next to each other in Herzegovina. In Vrilecha, Aseleji Skender, here lies Skender, Muslim, and Aseleji Ivan, here lies Ivan. Uh, these rare examples of completely identical inscriptions, um, but just differentiated by tombstone. Uh, here is an, a, a very interesting tombstone. Muslim tombstones usually are dedicated just to one person. It's part of the theology of Islam that you, you need to be buried, um, and you know it's, it's part of the, the, the whole theology <coughs> of resurrection uh, in a single tombstone. Um, in, the, in the medieval uh, Christian practice of Bosnia, this was not necessarily the case. And this uh, tombstone dedicated to two brothers, Hassan and Ahmed, two Muslims, is an indication that actually there is a continuation of the practice, um, contrary to the, the standard Islamic way of, of um, uh, burial uh, uh, of individuals. Um, and this is uh, uh, another example of um, of uh, shared epigraphy, translation of a very common um, expression. Um, it's, it's there in Latin, it's there in, in, in the Catholic tradition uh, all over the place. This one is, um, I took a picture of this long time ago, actually in Croatia, in, in Tuchepi, uh, next to Makarska. And, but it is, you know, it just, I happen to have it. And, and of course, it's all everywhere else in, in, um, uh, among the Catholic tombstones. Uh, what you were now is what we, what you are now is what we were and what, you, what we are now is so you shall be. I mean, all kinds of um, variations of this theme. And here on the left side is a direct translation of this inscription in Arabic. Again, it's very uncommon. You won't find this in, in uh, Muslim cultures elsewhere. This is a translation from the Catholic uh, tradition in Bosnia. Uh, or you who stops at my grade, do remember what I say. Uh, this uh, yesterday I was as you are now, tomorrow as you shall be. Ya waqifil and qabri. It's it's a rather um, um, again unusual for a Muslim to be remembered in this particular way. Um, as a kind of final um, uh, statement on this, I want to just to give you a um, <coughs> an example of uh, of a tombstone that is um, that was erected in early 20th century uh, for a, a Jewish. Um, um, an, an eminent Jewish thinker and uh, a, a member of the Jewish community in, uh, in Sarajevo, uh, Zeki Efendi Rafaelovic, who died in 1916, which is a unique example of this kind of shared epigraphy, uh, multilingual shared epigraphy. And his tombstone um, contains three inscriptions, in Bosnian, in Hebrew, in Bosnian, and in Ottoman Turkish. Um, and usually you don't find, uh, uh, you wouldn't find these kinds of commonalities. Um, on, and some argue this is actually the only, the only Jewish tombstone in the world which has an Arabic inscription. I mean, it's not Arabic, it's Turkish, but this is, you know, one of those claims that I'm not, I don't know about it. But, but what is actually interesting here is that the three uh, inscriptions say completely three different things. So in other words, that there is, um, th there is a recognition that it is not, you are not to be necessarily identified with the members of your community, of, of everybody in your community, or for that matter that you are going to, to be um, remembered in the same way, but rather that you in fact respect the fact that the people who might come to your grave might read different things out of it, might be readers of a different kind of uh, commemorative culture, and that you can be remembered in this kind of shared way of commemorative intimacy, which I think, and social intimacy, which I think is really quite um, an extraordinary statement that, in fact, you, you want to speak to everybody around you rather than just immediate um, community that you belong to. Um, and um, f for me, these kinds of um, tombstones represent precisely that, you know, that, that important intervention in, in the way in which we remember the past uh, as being you know, uh, constantly acrimonious between, uh, you know, as if somehow uh, people lived in, in, in history by taking sides rather than simply living it, rather than making it. In other words, that, you know, that we look, when we look at these cemeteries of the, of, of, uh, particularly outside of the cities, these rural cemeteries, they indicated that, in fact, life went on 
despite of what your religious identification was, it just this didn't necessarily mean that it had to be that you were not authentically um, to be identified with the religious community that you belong to, but rather that those uh, religious identifications were much more porous than what we assume them nowadays to be. There is an expression in Bosnia which uh, is very common for uh, this period in history, which has usually been translated as, the, as, as all those Bosnians who don't really care about religion. But in fact, I think it is the opposite. It's precisely saying that, that identity is not necessarily fixed. And the expression goes, um, do, do podne ilia posle podne alia, which, which is un, until, the, until uh, in the morning uh, Elijah, in the afternoon Ali. So, you know, you can be, in other words, that, you are, that, that the issue of identity is not, not to be seen as uh, carved in stone. Thank you. Thank you.